and welcome students to today's lecture regarding the oxidation of fatty acids. To introduce my lecture, the triacylglycerols, which are stored energy reserves, gets hydrolyzed to simpler absorbable forms such as fatty acids and glycerol by the enzyme known as lipase. The free fatty acids in turn combines with the serum albumin in the bloodstream and they get transported to outer mitochondrial membrane. And these fatty acids are generated as fatty acyl-CoA in the mitochondrial matrix. So beta oxidation is a catabolic process whereby the fatty acid molecules that have reached the mitochondrial matrix are broken down to generate acetyl-CoA which then enters the citric acid cycle and then generates NADH and FADH2 which are coenzymes used in electron transport chain or the ETC. The name beta oxidation is derived from the beta carbon atom which is involved in this oxidation process. A brief classification on fatty acids. The fatty acids from the triacylglycerol comes in saturated, unsaturated or even odd carbon number chains. Although the beta oxidation of all the fatty acids follows four oxidation steps in general, beta oxidation of unsaturated and odd carbon numbered fatty acids, they have some deviations and extra cycles. Now stages of beta oxidation are as follows. The beta oxidation of saturated fats mostly occurs via four oxidation steps involving many enzymes and electron transfers. The fatty acids undergo oxidative removal of successive two carbon units in the form of acetyl-CoA starting from the carboxyl end of the fatty acyl chain. The general four steps in the beta oxidation are as In the first stage, the fatty acyl-CoA undergoes dehydrogenation producing a double bond between the alpha and the beta carbon atoms also known as C2 and C3. This will yield a trans delta 2 enoyl CoA. This delta 2 here designates the position of the double bond. This new double bond form will have a trans configuration. The enzyme involved in this first step of oxidation involves a group of isogyms that ache on the 12 to 18 carbon atoms long fatty acids. Also, these isogyms have FAD as positive group which receives the removed electrons from the fatty acyl CoA. Then the reduced FAD will immediately donate the electrons to an electron carrier of the mitochondrial respiratory chain ETF also known as electron transferring flavoprotein. Now in the second stage, a water molecule is added to the double bond of the trans delta 2 enoyl CoA. This gives the L stereoisomer of beta hydroxyacyl CoA, also known as 3 hydroxyacyl CoA. The enzyme involved in this reaction is the enoyl CoA hydratase. In the third stage, the L stereoisomer of the beta hydroxyacyl CoA from the second stage is dehydrogenated to form the beta ketoacyl CoA by enzyme beta hydroxyacyl CoA dehydrogenase. Here in this step, NAD plus is the electron acceptor, and upon getting reduced to NADH, it again transfers the electrons to NADH dehydrogenase. Now in the fourth and the final stage of the oxidation cycle, the beta ketoacyl CoA is reacted with a molecule of coenzyme A by acyl-CoA acetyl transferase. This is also known as the thiolase enzyme. This overall step is known as thiolysis reaction. Now, the four stages are repeated to yield acetyl-CoA according to the fatty acid chain length. As an example here, the 16-carbon palmitic acid undergoes seven passes through oxidative sequences in each pass losing two carbons as acetyl-CoA. By the end of the seven cycles, the last two carbons of the palmitate, originally here the C15 and the C16, will remain as acetyl-CoA. 
For palmitic acid, in one pass of a beta oxidation, one molecule of acetyl-CoA, two pairs of electrons, and four protons, they are removed from the long chain fatty acetyl-CoA. Here in this case is the palmitoyl-CoA. Shortening it by two carbon atoms to yield the 14 carbon here, meristoyl-CoA. Now below is the reaction. One molecule of palmitoyl-CoA, here 16 carbon, one CoA molecule, one FAD molecule, one NAD plus, reacting with one water molecule altogether to give one meristoyl CoA reduced by two carbon, that is 14 carbon, one acetyl CoA, one FADH2, one NADH, and one proton. The meristoyl CoA can go through another set of the four beta oxidation reactions to further yield a second molecule of acetyl-CoA and laurel-CoA, which is the coenzyme thioester of the 12-carbon laurel. Now, altogether, seven passes of beta-oxidation sequence are required to oxidize one molecule of palmitoyl-CoA to finally eight molecules of acetyl-CoA. Overall equation is represented as one palmitoyl-CoA with one seven-CoA 7 FAD molecules, 7 NAD plus, with one, 7 water molecules to finally give 8 acetyl CoA molecules, 7 FADH2, 7 NADH, and 7 proton molecules. The net energy gain. Each molecule of FADH2 form during oxidation of the fatty acid donates a pair of electrons to the ETF electron transferring flavor protein of the respiratory chain and about 1.5 ATP molecules are generated during the transfer of each electron pair of oxygen. Similarly, each NADH molecule delivers a pair of electrons to the mitochondrial NADH dehydrogenase and the subsequent transfer of each electron pairs to oxygen molecule results in the formation of 2.5 ATP molecules. Thus, four ATP molecules are formed for each two carbon you need removed in one pass through the sequence. The overall net gain equation as 1 palmitoyl CoA, 7 coenzyme A, 7 FAT, 7 NAD plus, plus 7 molecules of water to finally give the product as 8 acetyl CoA molecules, 7 FADH2, 7 NADH, and finally 7 protons. Again, the overall equation for oxidation of A palmitoyl CoA to 8 molecules of acetyl CoA here, including electron transfers and oxidative phosphorylations, is represented as 1 palmitoyl CoA. 7 coenzyme A, 7 molecules of oxygen, 28 inorganic phosphate or the PI, plus 28 ADP molecules to finally yield as 8 acetyl CoA, 28 ATP, along with 7 water molecules. Now, the acetyl CoA received can be further oxidized in the citric acid cycle. The acetyl CoA produced from the oxidation of fatty acids can be oxidized to carbon dioxide and water via the citric acid cycle. So, 8 acetyl CoA molecules with 16 carbon dioxide molecules and 80 inorganic phosphate and 80 ADP molecules will give 8 CoA molecules, 80 ATP, 16 carbon dioxide, and 16 water molecules. Combining the equation 2 and 3, the overall equation for the complete oxidation of palmitoyl CoA to carbon dioxide and water is represented as 1 palmitoyl CoA, 23 molecules of oxygen, 108 inorganic phosphate, 108 ADP molecules to finally yield 1 CoA molecule, 108 ATP molecules, 16 carbon dioxide, plus 23 water molecules. So, to conclude the net energy gain. The net energy gain per molecule of one palmitoyl is 
now 106 ATP. Since the previous activation of palmitate to palmitoyl CoA will break a phosphoanhydride bond, this requires two ATP molecules. So the lecture given so far is on saturated fatty acids oxidation. Now comes oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids requires two additional reactions. Most of the fatty acids from the dry acyl glycerols of animals and plants both are unsaturated. That is, they have one or more double bonds. These bonds are in cis configuration and cannot be acted upon by the inovel coa hydratase. Remember, this was the enzyme which was involved in the second stage. Thus, two auxiliary enzymes are needed for beta oxidation of the common unsaturated fatty acids which are the isomerase and the reductase. Now for study of unsaturated fatty acid beta oxidation, let us take an example of oleate, which is an 18 carbon monounsaturated fatty acid with a cis double bond between the C9 and the C10, also denoted as delta 9. Firstly, the oleate is converted to oleoyl CoA and like the saturated fatty acids, enters the mitochondrial matrix via the carnitine subtle. This oleol CoA then undergoes three passes through the fatty acid oxidation cycle to yield three molecules of acetyl CoA and the coenzyme A ester of a delta 3 12 carbon unsaturated fatty acid, the cis delta 3 dodecanoyl CoA. Here in the next step lies the deviation from the earlier saturated fatty acids oxidation four stages. This product cis delta 3 dodecanoyl CoA it cannot serve as a substrate for inoyl CoA hydratase, which acts only on the trans double bonds. Thus, the auxiliary enzyme delta 3 delta 2 inoyl CoA isomerase isomerizes the cis delta 3 dodecanoyl CoA to the trans delta 2 inoyl CoA. Now, this is now converted to the corresponding L beta hydroxy acyl CoA by the inoyl CoA hydratase enzyme. This L beta hydroxy acyl CoA is now acted upon by the remaining enzymes of the beta oxidation to finally yield acetyl CoA and the coenzyme A ester of a 10 carbon saturated fatty acid, the dodecanoyl CoA. The dodecanoyl CoA then undergoes four more passes to yield five more molecules of acetyl CoA. Altogether, nine acetyl CoAs are produced from one molecule of the 18 carbon oleate. Next, the other auxiliary enzyme mentioned earlier, that is reductase, is required for the oxidation of a polyunsaturated fatty acids. For example, we'll consider the 18 carbon linoleate, which has a cis delta 9, cis delta 12 configuration. This linoleate CoA undergoes three passes through the beta oxidation sequence to yield three molecules of acetyl CoA and the coenzyme A ester of a 12 carbon unsaturated fatty acid with a cis delta 3, cis delta 6 configuration. Overall, the combined actions of the inoyl CoA isomerase and the 2,4-dienoyl CoA reductase allows the re-entry of the intermediate into the beta oxidation pathway and its degradation to 6 acetyl CoAs. Now is the oxidation of odd carbon numbered fatty acids. Odd carbon numbered fatty acids are commonly found in plants and in marine organisms. The most common odd numbered fatty acids, that is the propionate, the chemical formula of which is the CH3, CH2, COO negative. It is formed by cattle and other ruminants during fermentation process. As usual, this propionate is first oxidized to propionyl CoA via the same four oxidation stages mentioned earlier. Thereafter, the propionyl CoA is first carboxylated to form the D stereoisomer of methylmalonyl CoA by the enzyme here, 
propionyl CoA carboxylase. This methyl melonyl CoA is then enzymatically epimerized to L methyl melonyl CoA by the enzyme methyl melonyl CoA racemase. Next, the L methyl melonyl CoA then undergoes an intramolecular rearrangement to form succinyl CoA. This reaction is catalyzed by methyl melonyl CoA mutase that requires a coenzyme B12, which then finally enters the citric acid cycle. Next, beta oxidation in peroxisomes. Peroxisomes they serve as major sites of beta oxidation in plant cells where we can find no mitochondria. Here, the intermediate involved is the coenzyme A derivatives of corresponding fatty acids. It also is carried out in four stages, which first, dehydrogenation, addition of water molecule to the resulting double bond, third, the oxidation of the beta hydroxy acyl CoA to a ketone, and finally, thiolytic levers by the coenzyme A. In peroxisomes, the acyl CoA oxidase introduces a double bond and it passes directly to a watt oxygen molecule, producing H2O2 or the hydrogen peroxide. The H2O2 is then immediately cleaved by the catalyst enzyme. In the mitochondrial beta oxidation, the electrons removed in the first oxidation step passes through the respiratory chain to an oxygen molecule to produce water and was accompanied by ATP synthesis. However, in the case of peroxisomes, the energy released from the first oxidation is not conserved as ATP, rather it is released as heat. Alpha oxidation in peroxisomes. If there is a presence of methyl group on the beta carbon of a fatty acid, beta oxidation is impossible. For such branched fatty acids, they are catabolized in peroxisomes by alpha oxidation step. One such example of fatty acid is the phytonic acid. So the phytonoyl CoA is hydroxylated on its alpha carbon involving molecular oxygen. It is then decarboxylated to form an aldehyde which is one carbon sorter and then is further oxidized to the corresponding carboxylic acid. Now this does not have a substituent on the beta carbon. Thus, after this, it can undergo the further beta oxidation which was mentioned earlier. Now endoplasmic reticulum also goes through oxidation. In some vertebrates, there is fatty acid oxidation at the far most omega carbon. The enzymes which is unique to omega carbon oxidation are located in the endoplasmic reticulum. And these enzymes target 10 to 12 carbon chain fatty acids. Firstly, a hydroxyl group is introduced in the omega carbon. The oxygen for this group comes from a molecular oxygen in a complex reaction that involves the cytochrome P450 and an electron donor, the NADH. This reaction is catalyzed by mixed oxidases. Next, the alcohol dehydrogenase oxidizes the hydroxyl group to an aldehyde molecule. The aldehyde is then oxidized to carboxylic acid, producing a fatty acid here now with a carboxyl group. Now, a coenzyme A can be attached to either end and then the molecule can enter the mitochondria to undergo the further beta oxidation. Now, Regulation of beta oxidation. Since this beta oxidation is a fuel consuming process, it is regulated so as to occur only when it is required. Only fatty acyl groups that have entered the mitochondria, they are committed to oxidation. Firstly, the melonyl CoA. This melonyl CoA is the first intermediate in the cytosolic biosynthesis of long chain fatty acids from the acetyl-CoA. This melonyl-CoA increases in concentration whenever the animal is well supplied with carbohydrate. So, 
excess of glucose which cannot be oxidized or stored as glycogen is converted in the cytosol into fatty acids for storage as triacylglycerol. This melonal CoA inhibits the carnitin acyl transferase 1, ensuring that the oxidation of fatty acids is inhibited whenever the liver is amply supplied with glucose as fuel. The next regulating point, which is the enzyme beta hydroxy acyl CoA dehydrogenase, is inhibited whenever the ratio of NADH to NAD gets high. So, the third regulating point is that high concentrations of acetyl CoA will inhibit the thiolase. Remember, this enzyme was also involved in beta oxidation. Now, defects may arise from dysregulations of beta oxidation process. First, the mutation in medium chain acyl CoA dehydrogenase, also known as MCAD, it causes a syndrome characterized by high blood glucose levels of octanoic acid, hypoglycemia, sleepiness, vomiting, and finally coma. The faulty peroxisomes leads to a syndrome, gel wager syndrome, while faulty peroxisomal metabolism it causes X-linked adrenoleukodystrophy, also known as XALD. And both these defects leads to accumulation in the blood of very long chain fatty acids. Lastly, a genetic defect in the enzyme phytanoel CoA hydroxylase leads to very high blood levels of phytonic acid and severe neurological problems. Finally, concluding the lecture on beta oxidation, that beta oxidation occurs in four main stages. First, the fatty acids at mitochondria are dehydrogenated to trans delta 2 enovel CoA intermediate. Next, a water molecule is added to it to give the L stereoisomer of the beta hydroxy acyl CoA. At the third stage, this beta hydroxy acyl CoA is dehydrogenated to beta keto acyl CoA. Fourthly and lastly, the beta keto acyl CoA is thiolized to yield acetyl CoA and ATP. These four stages, these four stages, okay, are repeated according to chain length of the fatty acid to finally yield acetyl CoAs and ATPs. Oxidation of the unsaturated fatty acids require two additional enzymes earlier mentioned as isomerase and reductase and also two reactions prior to continuing with the same four stages. This beta oxidation also occurs in plant peroxisomes and the omega oxidation that is oxidation involving omega carbon occurs at endoplasmic reticulum. Last but not the least, fatty acids oxidation are very well regulated and this regulation will result in abnormalities. That is all to today's lecture. Thank you.